Hi y'all, I'm going to try to make the um, blueberry carrot juice, El Ruderai, um cultured uh, juice. Uh, it should be pretty straightforward and the good news is that apparently it's giving a very high con uh, content of um, the bacteria once it was, it was, it's been tested once or twice and up against uh, coconut milk or the r traditional cream or milk version of the El Ruderai yogurt. Uh, it just has a, a, a better success rate. So get yourself some carrot juice, um, blueberry juice. I've, I've also heard it can, you can use um, uh, cranberry or uh, pomegranate juice as well works. Um, a teaspoon of inulin, some of your um, El Ruderai bacteria, and a touch of um, El Glutamine, which I'm gonna be using 250 milligrams. So I'll use a, a little capsule here. This is a, a thousand, so I'll just use 25% of that. Um, now the trick is to sterilize your glass bottle. So right over here, you can see I've got my uh, water boiling. So what I'm going to do quite simply is put my glass jar in here. Try not to burn yourself in. I'm going to fill it up with more water, which I have here in the kettle. And you want to cover this. This is like the, the, the traditional way of sterilizing your uh, your jars for making jam, etc., your preserves. So just make sure it's covered. Uh, I'll boil that for 10 minutes. And um, then after that, I'll uh, sterilize the cap as well so that we can get uh, pretty much a, a clean uh, ferment going on. All right, so it's been 10 minutes uh sterilizing i also put the lid in for about a minute and a half also to sterilize that and okay so here we go the jar is sterilized we're going to add um 70 percent carrot juice and the rest is my blueberry juice And then the uh, glutamine. This basically uh, helps with the, uh, prevents the uh, El Ruderai from deteriorating uh, at a lower pH. So it sort of guards it against uh, low pH uh, die off. So that's about 25%. Um, and then a half teaspoon of glycerin. And I do want to check the pH level because if it's too low, like I mean like below three, we're going to want to add some baking soda, depending on your brand, I guess, of uh, carrot juice and all that. Right here, I'm at four. So I'm going to skip the baking soda. You don't need to mix it because you're just gonna cover it, shake it up, and then put it back into the boiling water and continue. Ultimately, you want to get it up to around 90 Celsius, 185 Fahrenheit. So I'm gonna turn the heat back on. I'm gonna let that go until what I assume is about that temperature, which will help sterilize it. So after some reflecting, I've decided to add some baking soda just because the um, the ferment has to go from, well, it's, it's gonna lower in pH over the next 30, 30 odd some odd hours. So uh, if it's already at four, and that's going to go to 3.5. It doesn't give it, give it that much room. So I'm going to quickly add a teaspoon of baking soda. Whoa. Oh, we didn't want that to happen. But lesson learned. I still can save it. We know that it's really hot, so after 8 to 10 minutes, your liquid is going to be sterilized, by the way. So let's check the pH now. Okay. 
Oh yeah, you see right away, we're up to almost 5.5. 5.5. So, I'm going to readjust. Just to touch more. I think it was the uh, blueberry that gave it the low pH. It's pretty acidic. Carrot juice, on the other hand, is more neutral. Okay, that was about how much that I lost. So let's shake it up. I'm not going to add any more inulin. Alright, let's see if we still have about the same. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to put it back to sterilize. For another 10 minutes. So there was another two other things that I forgot to um, add to the recipe. The Pepto Pro, which is a hy hydrolyzed uh, casein protein powder and one teaspoon of sugar. So I took it out of the boiling water. I'm just going to quickly add the pro hydrolyzed protein and uh, a teaspoon of sugar. So now it's ready to remove, it's hot enough. And I'm tempted to put it, I, now you have to let it cool off, right, to body temperature so before you add your uh, bacteria. So I'm just gonna open it a touch to let out a little bit of pressure. And then I'm gonna close it back up. I'm gonna leave it there for a couple hours to get to room temperature, I mean body temperature. Okay, so what I did was I cooled it off and I added, I put it in the refrigerator for like about 30 minutes because that really accelerates, but you don't want to put the hot glass jar out of the boiling water into cold water because it'll probably crack the glass. So we want to do this quick, quickly because we went to the trouble of sterilizing this. So I'm gonna open this quickly and then just add about 20 billion CFUs of my uh, Elruderi powder and then I'll put it back. I added the um, Elruderi powder really quickly. I put the cover on and I'm sealing it very tightly. My sous vide machine, uh, yogurt machine is preheated and the water goes up almost to the to the level of the uh, juice and I'm going to ferment it at uh, 100 Fahrenheit for about 30 hours. I'll keep you posted. Okay, so this is the after 20 hours of fermenting I want to get a pH test of, because there's nine hours left, right? So I just want to see if it's dropping the pH. So I'm going to try to open, open this quickly. See, it's, there's gas actually building up here. It's coming down definitely so last night it was really at 5.5 or maybe 6 and now it's coming down to 4.5 so I'll probably stop it in about uh, oh another give it another four four hours hopefully it goes down to four all right so we're gonna test again with about I put 30 hours to start so we're at 26 at 100 Fahrenheit Last time I opened, there was a little bit of gas that escaped. Yeah, you can hear it. So there is some fermentation going on. If you can hear that. I didn't tell you though, last time I tasted it, um, the pH went from six to 4.5. And the taste was a little bit sour. But um, then I tried the actual just juice and I didn't really notice a difference between the fermented and the unfermented. So maybe it needs to go a little further. Four, 
that's four percent i mean that's four ph so i'm going to stop it there before it goes any further i'm going to give it another taste it's not bad actually but you do i do feel the fizz so we have some fermentation going on so i think it was a successful inoculation and um i'll show you another ph test um once it's refrigerated so this is the morning i refrigerated overnight the ph last night was four and um, it had started um the day before at 5.5 .5, so um basically we got some ferment a successful ferment um the amount of um cfus i'm not sure of but apparently carrot juice is a better uh, medium than uh, than uh, dairy and yeah so that's four 4.5 oh we can see here yeah so that's where we want it to be basically otherwise if it gets too low on the acidity level then your wrist die off let's try this the taste test It's definitely different from the original juice, which has the which is blueberry carrot. I can taste um, so, more sour and then a little bit of a, of a fermented kind of um, kombucha sourness. So I hope I'm going to continue trying this recipe. I'm, apparently, we're not supposed to drink too much of it. Maybe like um, 100 milliliters a day or a quarter cup um, would be uh, more than enough um, to see the effects because it is very concentrated. And, um, I mean, if this at the end of the day, um, gives us the health benefits compared to the, um, unpredictable yogurt, uh, blend, then, um, I also do try the coconut, which is another good one. I recommend trying that as well. So, um, stay healthy. And, um, if you have any questions, leave it in the, uh, comment section. Have a good day.